This past winter, for her second time, marathon runner Becca Peasy out of Belmont, Massachusetts, completed seven marathons on seven different continents in seven days. Becca became the first female to complete the 777 Challenge in 2016. Her next big event is the upcoming Boston Marathon. She spoke to students at Hopkinton Middle School about her experience completing a marathon on seven different continents. You guys are so lucky to be living in Hopkinton. This is so awesome. I'm so inspired to come out. Who's going to come watch the Boston Marathon? All of you? Thank you. Um, so, I, in 2016, I was given the opportunity to make history, to be the first American female to run seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. So I love to run, I love to travel. I thought, I'm gonna give it a shot, I have nothing to lose, and I went for it and I did it. So I was given the opportunity two years later, just this recent February, to do it again. And it was a big decision to make to do it again because everything went so well the first time and I was able to, to win all seven marathons. And it was a big decision and I said to my daughter for the second time, what do you think about about this and she said yeah mom she's 10 years old she, we live in Belmont and she said I believe in you let's make it happen you can do it I studied the courses the locations everything that I needed to know um, this time I was given an opportunity by Tom Brady's company TB12 they said we heard what you're doing come out we will train you and we'll help you cross we'll help you physically and mentally to, to run 777. So I thought if it works for Tom Brady, it most certainly will work for me. So I'm gonna give it a shot. And I went out to Foxborough and I was working really, really hard with them and they met me at the finish line and it was so awesome. So one of the things that Tom Brady's company did was document my journey. So I will tell you about it and I'll show you the video that they made for me. My message is to the kids is dream big, believe in yourself and take chances. Right, and um, could you talk about um, how long it took you to run these seven marathons? How many days were you away? I was gone in total for 10 days. So the first time that I took on the 777, I was gone for 16. So we chartered a plane this time around, and it was much easier and a faster transition each time. And um, I understand you're training about uh, seven days a week. Um, what's that like? I mean, do you ever feel... Uh, pains from all that running <laughs> so I feel very fortunate to have running the running community behind me and, and everybody's always willing to go for a run with me and but I I really say listen to your body if something doesn't feel right or you're hurt or something back off until until you feel better and and to show up not finishing is not an option so prepare your mind study the course and put in the work and you mentioned you've been running marathons since you were 17 years old. Off the top of your head, can you think about how many marathons in total you've completed? I know for sure I've done 64 marathons, and my current goal is to finish a marathon in all 50 states, and I've done 34 states, but I've done 17 Boston marathons. My favorite day of the year, I run the Boston Marathon every year. What makes the Boston Marathon so special? The crowd support, you know, and, and the Red Sox updates and Wellesley Screen Tunnel, the right on Boylston, left on Hereford, right on Hereford, left on Boylston. It's, it's, there's nothing in the world like crossing the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Is the training going good? I know the weather has been a little wacky out there. This weather's ridiculous. It's April 6th and it's going to snow today. That's, that's just so random. So, <laughs> but come Boston Marathon Day, Patriots Day, you never know what you're going to get, so you might as well train through everything. All right, and I understand you have a foundation as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? The Becca Peasy Foundation, last year we gave three we gave three scholarships to graduating seniors, and it was my way to give back to the community, and I partnered with the Belmont Boosters and Belmont Savings Bank, and to have this race, to do what I love and watch the community come together for the kids' one-mile run, and they all get shirts and medals, and then the 5K, we all get medals and shirts again, and, and it's such a fun day for the community, and it makes me feel good to give back to the community. So uh, there's tons of, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun day, April 29th. So if you do come out, come say hello to me, and I'd love to see you there. All right, and I guess the good thing is with this uh, wild weather that you've pretty much ran in all elements, so you'll be ready. I have no, no excuses. How could I co could possibly complain about being cold when I ran a marathon in Antarctica? I can't. All right, so... Uh Another great program here by uh, Desire to Inspire today. Uh, can you talk about what Desire to Inspire is all about? Desire to Inspire is fi finding ways to inspire our students to set goals and reach for those goals, get out of their comfort zones. And um, can you talk about uh, when Desire to Inspire uh, started? Yeah, we started right after the marathon bombing as a way to keep uh, the positive spirit of the Boston Marathon alive with our students here in town. Um, and so it's just evolved from 
being how are we going to keep that positive spirit of life to curriculum pieces that are all tied to the marathon, running events, guest speakers for our students. Teachers go to travel to Greece every year and they're supported by the 26.2 Foundation and the Examine Life program now. Um, they bring their, the, what they learn while they're in Greece and bring it back and put that into their curriculum as well. And I understand there's a lot of different um, programs and also uh, some activities going on surrounding Desire to Inspire uh, every year towards the marathon. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the activities that are going on around Desire to Inspire this year? So right now, this is our only event actually this year, but the last two or three years, we've actually had a whole school 2.62, and the entire school goes out and runs 2.62 miles. We're taking a little break this year. The weather's been a little funky, so it's been a little hard to schedule all those things. So. All right, well, um, can you uh, just talk about where people can find more information about Desire to Inspire? So also can, they can go right to the middle school uh, webpage, and there's links right on the webpage to Desire to Inspire, all the curriculum pieces, because we've the, it's been presented on the national level and at the state level, so other schools can go and use our curriculum across the world. So it's, inter it's, a, great, it's a great program. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. There you go. So... We want to welcome to Hopkins Middle School, Becca Peasy. Becca, so most of you know this, she ran seven marathons on seven continents in seven days and set the world record for that. Amazing stuff. She'll actually, soon she'll be in the Guinness Book of World Records for that, but she's also run 17 Boston marathons. She's going to run her 18th this year. So she has a great story. She's going to share it with you today. And then afterwards, there'll be some time for some questions and answers. So take it away, Beck. It's yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah? Thanks so much for having me. You guys are so lucky to be living in Hopkinton. This is so awesome. I'm so inspired to come out. Who's going to come watch the Boston Marathon? All of you? Thank you. Um, so I... In 2016, I was given the opportunity to make history, to be the first American female to run seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. So I love to run, I love to travel. I thought, I'm gonna give it a shot, I have nothing to lose, and I went for it and I did it. So I was given the opportunity two years later, just this recent February, to do it again. And it was a big decision to make to do it again because everything went so well the first time and I was able to, to win all seven marathons. And it was a big decision and I said to my daughter for the second time, what do you think about about this and she said yeah mom she's 10 years old she, we live in Belmont and she said I believe in you let's make it happen you can do it I studied the courses the locations everything that I needed to know um, this time I was given an opportunity by Tom Brady's company TB12 they said we heard what you're doing come out we will train you and we'll help you cross we'll help you physically and mentally to, to run 777. So I thought if it works for Tom Brady, it most certainly worked for me, so I'm gonna give it a shot. And I went out to Foxborough and I was working really, really hard with them and they met me at the finish line and it was so awesome. So one of the things that Tom Brady's company did was document my journey. So I will tell you about it and I'll show you the video that they made for me. And having them at the finish line with my friends and family and my daughter meant the world to me. So I was, they really did inspire me to run as fast as I could. So talking about the 777 for the second time, the locations changed. And that's a major reason why I wanted to run this race again, because of the location changes. So we started out in Novo, Antarctica, went to Cape Town, Africa, Perth, Australia, Dubai, Asia, Lisbon, Europe, Cartagena, Colombia, and finished in Miami. Seven different marathons on seven different continents in just seven days. This is Belmont native Becca Peasy's second world marathon. First time anyone has ever run this race twice. It is an incredible feat, a historic win. And I said I would never be back, but, but I'm definitely excited and looking forward to doing this again. Nobody's ever done it twice. I love you. Frozen continent, we're off. We're going to do it. Antarctica Marathon in Novo. It was awesome. 
I got off to a good start in Antarctica. My guard was up and I was ready to take on the next six marathons. Cape Town, let's do it. At Cape Town, Africa it was hell. 90% humidity with 85 degrees. That was, that was the toughest one for me. We are in Perth, Australia, about to run the third marathon. Beautiful. The spectators were amazing, cheering me on by first name. Dubai, what are we doing right there? Marathon 4. Huh. It was about 85 degrees and humid. We just touched down in Lisbon, Europe, and we're here for our fifth marathon, number five. Let's go. Lisbon, I had friends and family there, so that was really, that was a supportive group, and, and we ran on the river, and that was a beautiful course, and I felt good that was my fifth marathon. So I felt like I was ready to give some more. I was holding back a little bit, but felt good to be working hard. Cartagena, Colombia was hot, really hot. So that was, that was one of the toughest ones for me. It'll be hard for you to believe when you were in Antarctica, which was only six days ago. <laughs> it's lovely here in Miami, really well organized, and just enjoy it. So well done, and we'll see you at the finish. Miami was just my favorite because my friends and family were there and at that point I knew that I was on a good track and, and just took one mile at a time to get to the finish line. This time my daughter was at the finish line and having her at the finish line was my biggest inspiration to get there as fast as I could get there. I crossed the finish line, I was first female. That meant a lot to me, I'd been working really hard, but above all, I broke the world record. Ran it in six days, eight hours and 12 minutes. To own that record in front of my family and to give that thanks back to TB12, I'm proud of it. And it's very rare that I'm proud of myself, but I'm definitely proud of myself in this one. When I crossed the finish line and my daughter was there for me and she looked me in the face and said, we did it. At that moment, I knew that I had made her proud. TB12 was such a huge role in helping me achieve my dreams and make history. I'm so grateful to be part of the family. My biggest advice to you is find your World Marathon Challenge, dream big, and take chances. So that was my journey with TB12, and I'm just so grateful to be part of their family. And um, I'll take you through my slideshows now. And any questions that you have at the end, I'm happy to answer them. I love to answer the questions at the end. I was given number 41. F some fun facts about the day, seven days. We crossed 16 time zones in seven days. We ran 183 miles. Temperature ranges were negative 10 in Antarctica to 91 in Columbia. We flew 23,000 miles and averaged 50, we had 59 hours in the air and averaged 12 hours per continent. So day one, Novo, Antarctica, negative 10 degrees. <laughs> this is me taking the race very seriously. 
We flew in on the Russian Illusion, which is a military private plane that was able to land on a glacier in Antarctica. Not really what I have in mind inside of it. It's, it's, it's pretty dreary, and we slept on the floor if we needed to sleep, and it was a seven-hour flight. We were sat in bucket seats to the left, and that was the pilot upper right hand. This is at mile 22 in Antarctica. The sun is totally blinding. The wind is fierce, and I just always think I'm happy that Antarctica is first. Get it over with and move on to the next one. This photo was taken at 2 in the morning. In Antarctica, it's 24 hours of blinding sunlight. So protecting my skin and my eyes from the sun is always the toughest part for me. I was off to a good start in Antarctica. I felt like I was organized and ready to take on six more. Ma Marathon 2, Cape Town, Africa, 89 degrees. From this point on, we were on an Airbus A340, which is a military private, I mean, which is a private luxury plane. So that was a lot more comfortable than sleeping on the floor. We had a couch on the top right-hand corner. We slept on, on the plane, you know, because we didn't really have hotels and we had compression pants, which were great. We saw penguins in Africa, not Antarctica. This is still in Africa. We saw a really cool volcano. I love to run and I love to travel, so getting to see all these things was really cool. So happy to be done with that one. It was really hot. Coming in Perth, Australia, summer in Australia was 88 degrees. We ran a lot of the marathons at night just because we only had 168 hours to finish the race. Anybody know who that is? Race director of the Boston Marathon. It was, I was, I'm proud to call him a friend, and he was on this journey with me running as well. He did really, really well. If you ever see him, tell him congratulations on the 777. He, he, he was really inspiring to be there with. Dubai, Asia, number four. Dubai is always one of my favorite. This was the largest building behind it in, in the world. It's kind of cool to see that and all the different cultures of, of each location was really neat. This was run at midnight. G getting to Skype with my daughter on every single continent was really cool as well, except for Antarctica because there's no Wi-Fi there. U Lisbon, Europe, number five. Run at nine o'clock at night, which was good because a lot of these locations were really hot, so not have to, having to run with the sun was really nice. That was the only good day that we had. It was like 56, 52 degrees. Columbia Marathon 6 was the hardest one for me. It was 91 degrees. We got off the plane and were greeted by this little running team who, who we inspired. But since we ran it at 9 o'clock at night, they were sleeping. But they met us at the airport, gave us bottled water, which was really helpful. This is Cartagena, Columbia. And as I started the number 6, the Patriots were in the Super Bowl, and they had just lost. I was at mile 24 when I realized that they had lost the, lost the game, and, and, I, and I also was lost in Columbia, and, which was pretty scary. So being lost in Columbia, and I made my way back, and I found these guys, and we finished the race together, and so it was a bad day for Boston. I was very, very fortunate to have friends and family on all seven continents, to, or on all six continents to support me, except for Antarctica, because nobody likes me that much. But everybody came out and ran with me and cheered me on, and it was, I was very lucky to have that. Marathon 7, Miami, it was 89 degrees. This was my, my whole, fr my friends and family came to, to cheer me on and support me. A lot of palm trees in Miami, that was pretty cool. Crossing the finish line, 50 years ago, women were told that their bodies could not handle the distance of a marathon. Fast forward 50 years and I'm crossing the finish line on all seven continents for the second time with my daughter by my side with my husband holding the finish line tape just meant the absolute world to me. You know, and people always say, what's your advice? My biggest advice to you is dream big, believe in yourself, and take chances because when you do, anything is possible. My sister has run, I think, 12 Boston marathons. My husband and daughter at the finish. Do you like to run? 
Does anybody want to? Did I? If I inspired anybody to run, I put on April this coming April this April 29th. It's a Sunday. I put on a really fun third annual 5K for the town, and it also has a kids one mile run, and you get shirts and t-shirts, medals and t-shirts, and it's my way to give back to the community. So you can sign up on race menu, or you can have your parents sign up on BeccaPZ.com. So I would, if you if you come there, come say hi to me. Say you came to the Hoppington Middle School. Come come say hello to me. Does anybody have any questions about the race? Yeah. Repeat the question. Okay. The question was that I went on all seven continents. Yes, I did. Thank you. So when when is the race again? I I forgot. The my 5K and kids yeah, one mile run, one. April 29th. Okay. And Thanks. you can walk. You can walk it. You don't even have to run it. You can walk it. If you forget, you can also sign. If you forget race menu, you can also sign up on my name, BeccaPZ.com. Uh -huh. I'm, I got you. Go ahead. Uh, I think I forgot. I really forgot. I forgot. I'm gonna, I'll come back to you, Lona. Okay. All right, got another one over here. What's your mile time? Four, four fifty-seven. Did you win all the marathons? I ran, I won all 14 marathons. So to do it, a people say, will you run this way race again? And it's, it's a big thing to take on a third time because I've, I've been so lucky the first two times. Uh, <laughs> when's the next seven continent race thing? The next 777 is next January. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what was your inspiration for running all these? My inspiration is my daughter, you know, and she believes in me and it's, it's, it was my job to make her proud and, and I knew that to have her support just meant the world to me. How many people were running all the marathons with you? The first time I ran 777, there were 15. And we were going through American Airlines. The second time, we chartered a plane. So we had 51 runners. Second time. Uh, what was your best finish time, like, overall? In all seven, con on all 14 continents, it was 340 in Miami the first time. What inspired you to get you into running? So what inspired me to start running? My dad was a big runner, so it was kind of in my blood and kind of, and so he kind of for, said, come on, come run with me, and I would go run with, and I remember when he was running and I would ride my bike, and I remember saying to my dad, I was six years old, I said, I don't want to ride a bike, I want to run. So he let me run, he took me to my first race when I was six years old, and I won something. I won a little water bottle and a little package from an, an, an old bank that's no longer around, the bank saving. And I said to my dad, I'm like, this is awesome. If I win, I can keep, I can get a prize. And he's like, yeah, that's basically how it works. And I remember loving that feeling. So my dad inspired me to run. I thought my daughter would be this big runner. She's not, she has a different sport and that's okay. She's in gymnastics and, and I'm so proud of her. And I don't really know about how to point the, to the gymnastics is a whole new sport to me, but to watch her in her sport, it's awesome. I love it. What's your training schedule like? That's a good question. My training, so the first time around, I was running 70 to 100 miles a week. 
I was doing CrossFit personal training. I had given up the entire year to work really hard and focus on this race. The second time, I was running between 70 and 100 miles a week, but I was going to TB12's company and working on pliability and nutrition and, elect and electrolytes and making sure that I was mentally and physically where I needed to be to take this on. So I had the knowledge the second time, and the first time was the kind of like the fear of the unknown. So um, I was faster the first time, and the second time that I ran this, I was more fit. So I wasn't sure which one would, would get me to the finish line faster, but I was running between a 70 and 100 miles a week. What's your daughter's name? My daughter's name is Taylor. <laughs> um, did you get to meet Tom Brady? Yes, I got to meet Tom Brady. And, and I got to meet Gronkowski, who was very funny, and I got to meet David Ortiz. And David Ortiz and I were given a Globy, the Boston Globe, the Globy, and he said, do you just like to run all the time? I said, yeah, in a nutshell. And I said, you should run the Boston Marathon for your foundation. And he said, have you ever seen me run to first base? <laughs> so I hope someday that he does. What was your lowest point throughout all your races? My lowest point, good question. So the highs of this race were incredibly highs. The lowest points were really low. Being lost in Columbia was very scary for me. And, and the hardest part of this whole thing is missing my daughter being away from her for 10 days. Imagine your parents are away from you for 10 days. It's hard. So those are the two toughest. Stand up. Stand up. Um. How long did each marathon take? Each marathon took just under four hours, right around the four-hour mark. <laughs> I don't have any pets. <laughs> guys, guys. Did you get to sightsee, and if so, what were your favorite sights that you saw? So we didn't get to sightsee, but we did check in in Cape Town, Africa. When I went to Cape Town, Africa, we went through all of our gear check with the race director, made sure that all our gear was good enough for Antarctica. And since I was there for four days to acclimate to the weather, different climate, I went to Boulder, Boulder Beach and saw the penguins, which was, which was awesome. Other than that, no sightseeing. Yeah. I was 17 when I ran my first Boston Marathon. Yeah. Um, did you train every day of the week, like seven days a week? I trained seven days a week for one year. Um, what's, you, what's the best you ever did in a Boston Marathon? At 321. How many miles do you run a day? So currently, right now, where I'm not, I'm just training for one marathon, the Boston Marathon, 50 to 60 miles a week. Um, um, the first, I don't know. Um, the first time that you run that you ran the world thing, what were the cities that you went to? The first locations were Antarctica, Chile, Miami, Madrid, Morocco, Dubai, and it finished in Australia. Um, do the locations change every year for the 777? They're not supposed to. The locations are supposed to say the same because he, the race director did certify the courses, which takes a lot of money and effort. But when he doesn't love the location, he changes it. So because he changed the location, I ran it again. Uh, what, what was your diet before the race? And also, what were you eating like after each race since there was so little time in between? So, that was a good question. <laughs> so, Great question. I had a new...
I had a great nutritionist at TB12, and, and I was making sure that I was having all the proper nutrition and a lot of, you know, a lot of like chickens and proteins and, and dairy, and because I needed to show up to the starting line totally healthy. So, and then during the 777, it was eating on planes and whatever was available. So you couldn't be too picky. Uh, were you tired? I was so tired and, <laughs> and fatigued and, you know, not finishing. One of the things that I said in my training, and you guys can use this to this day, is you need to get real comfortable with being uncomfortable. And if you can get really comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's going to be your new normal. So when I crossed the finish line, I was, I was happy, but fatigued. Was it hard to adjust to the time zones? Yeah, it was really hard to adjust to the time zones. When I, on day three, I said to the um, airline stewardess, she said, do you need anything? And I said, what time is it? And she said, 11.14. And I said, a.m. or p.m.? And she said, you don't know? I said, no, I don't know. And she said, a.m. So that's how hard it was to get adjusted. But I always knew what, what time it was in Boston so that I could call my daughter. So doing the math in the current location was really tough. If you were to um, estimate how many gallons of water you drank, what would it be? I drank six bottles of water per day. All right, two more questions. Two more questions. How many times do you intend to run the 777? You should huh. totally run it seven times. I'm a, I intend to run it one time, and then it just keeps happening that I do it again. And it's $40,000, so, so any time that my sponsors say, hey, we will cover the fee for you again, then it's so tempting to me because I really do love this event. It's very well organized, and, and I love to travel. So, so maybe one more time. Um, is your husband... Is your husband a runner too? My husband is not a runner. We want to take a minute to say thank you to the 26.2 Foundation for helping bring this long. We want to thank Becca for coming out today. All right, can I have your attention, please, really quick? Uh, so once again, I want to thank uh, Becca for coming out. A uh, wonderful presentation, a really inspirational story. I want to thank Ms. Pinto and the Desire to Inspire team for working to bring her here. Uh, so thank you to all of them. Also, in case you don't know, uh, Mr. Paquette and Mrs. Passier are both uh, HMS uh, staff members who are running uh, the marathon this year, so make sure that you cheer them on. And at this time, we're going to start dismissal. So we'll start with uh, seventh grade. You are dismissed at this time. Seventh grade.